Welcome back. We're now on to part C, and these are going to be the long answer questions. So please give a like and a subscribe to help the channel grow. Thank you. Miguel owns a company that produces software for primary school children. He works in an office with other programmers to do this. They use PCs in the office, and Miguel uses a laptop when visiting schools to demonstrate the software to ch uh, the children. Each device has a graphical user interface, a GUI, an optional command line interface, CLI, a single-user multitasking operating system, so just a normal OS, a hard disk drive, HDD. Each programmer stores designs on the internal hard disk on their PC. The data stored on their PCs can be at risk even when not connected to the internet. Explain two threats to the data that can arise when a PC is not connected to the internet. So here are the answers. The first one we have is computer theft because someone could break into the office and walk away with a PC. Um, this could happen whether it's connected to the internet or not, but let's keep reading and see what they have. Malicious damage by someone deleting or editing malicious data on purpose. Okay, introducing viruses, malware via external devices. I think the first two, what they're probably trying to say here is that the computer can be stolen and you can have malicious damage, but because it's not connected to the internet, I'm going to assume that they mean that it should have backups. Typically, when you're connected to the internet, it's very, very easy to back stuff up, right? Now, let's just say I wanted to back this Word document up. I don't want to have it just on my PC. I could back it up to OneDrive, Google Drive. Amazon has their drive as well. And there's Dropbox. There's, there's so many of them. And most of them give you a free, a free tier, a free version. When you're not connected to the internet and someone steals your computer, you, you lose everything because you don't have it backed up anywhere else. Malicious damage again, more or less the same thing. If someone comes in and deletes the only copy of the file you have, then you've lost everything. Uh, introducing viruses, malware via external devices. This could always happen, but when you're not connected to the internet, I guess your antivirus won't be able to update itself to then fight against those viruses stroke malware. Accidental damage. Employee could spill drink and ruin the hard disk drive. Power surge leading to computer crashing, overwriting or deleting files. More or less the same thing here again. So your files could get damaged, deleted, corrupted, whatever you want to say. But the main thing is when it's not connected to the internet, it most likely won't have an off-site or an online backup. Hardware, system failure, damage to hard drive could encounter problems and employees may not be able to access data. Natural disaster caused by fire, floods, etc. Um, these answers are not very detailed. Now, I think the main thing you need to concern yourselves with when you're not connected to the internet, let me scroll back up because I don't really like these, these answers very much. Explain two threats that date that can, uh, to data that can arise when a PC is not connected to the internet. The data can be lost because if you don't have any backup of the data online, typically because we're speaking about online here, if you don't have a backup online on any one of those cloud storages I mentioned earlier, when the data is gone, it's completely gone. Another thing is your data could be corrupted by viruses, malware. When you are not connected to the internet, whatever malware or anti-malware software you downloaded is not going to be up to date. The one I have on Windows, it, it updates itself every time I turn my PC on. It checks for an update and it updates if necessary. If you are not connected to the internet, you don't get those new updates. So let's just say for argument's sake, you're a month or two months out on updates and someone comes and plugs in a memory stick to your PC because you don't have those updates, but their virus or their malware is newer than what your anti-malware can fight against, your PC gets infected. These are probably the two main ones I would say for this one. Um, again, uh, maybe another one could be the PC itself. So not just the anti-malware software, but the PC itself might be out of date. And because it's out of date, whatever bugs or issues that were present initially are still going to be there because the PC has not had a chance to update itself. Okay, so I've given three there. That These are ones I thought off the top of my head. I don't really like the answers that they give, so hopefully my answers make more sense. Thank you. Now, this is part two of the same question with Miguel and his programming team. So Miguel is considering moving to a cloud storage system. One benefit, one benefit of this would be to reduce the threats when storing data uh, to their hard disk drives. Discuss how moving to the cloud storage system would impact Miguel and the other programmers. I haven't been speaking much about keywords, and um, my apologies, but discuss. Discuss typically means have an argument, go back and forth. When you discuss something, you look at the positives and negatives. Very similar to implications, but when you discuss, you're just going to 
pretend as if you're speaking to someone else and you have to say, okay, well, this is a good reason why, this is a bad reason why, this is a good reason why, so on and so forth, back and forth, constantly going back and forth. Okay, so in the answers here, they have the positive impacts first, and I'm going to guess they have the negative ones underneath. All right, so let's go through them. So the data would be held in a central storage area accessible by all of the computer users. That's very true. When you have it on the cloud, typically everyone that the folder or file has been shared with can access it all at the same time. They can download a copy if they want. They can make edits and re-upload if they want. And it's very easy to share. So programmers, stroke Miguel, may be able to access, share each other's files, designs to offer device and help to each other access their own files from different devices if needed. This is probably one of the main things that I like about cloud, right? I'm at work, I'm using OneDrive. I'm on the train going home, I'm using OneDrive on my phone. I get home on a totally different laptop, I'm using OneDrive again, working on exactly the same file. Synchronizes across all devices being used when updates are made. It's more or less the same thing. When I make a change on one device, it, it I will be able to access or see those changes on other devices. Beneficial to Miguel as he visits clients using a laptop and PC. Uh, that's true again. When he's moving around, having a static file on a single device, not changing, not being updated, means that he always has to uh, maybe use a memory stick or a hard drive and transfer and download. And Whereas with cloud, you simply click on the file and whatever changes were made most recent would show up. Maybe able to introduce flexibility of working from home remotely for all programmers. Now, definitely 100%. Having the internet and cloud services have allowed a lot of people during lockdown, during COVID to work from home. This is no different. Can access files in the event of a hard drive failure. Very, very true again, because the files would have most likely been backed up to the cloud service. Um, if something were to happen to the hard drive, let's say my, my hard drive got, um, sorry, my laptop got blown up, it got blown to bits. I can still go to another device and access the same file I was working on whilst my laptop was catching on fire. All right. The business would benefit as productivity would increase when file sh uh, with file sharing. Very true again. There would be very little downtime. I wouldn't have to wait for someone to email me their version of a document so I can complete my sections. I can, in most cases, for example, OneDrive and Google Drive, we can have many people typing in the same document at the same time. So let's just say I need section one before I can do section two. While that person is working on section one, I can be in the document reading what they're doing, working on my section two may be able to allow some working from home leading to a re reduction in office over overheads. Um, if we have less people working in an office, we have less electric, less water, less gas, maybe no security needed, the office is closed, less rent, all of that. Now, the cost has somewhat been shifted to the employees because now they have to use their electric at home and their gas and their water. But in most cases, well, in all cases, it's going to be cheaper for the office. And if people don't have to travel to work, it might be better for them as well. Costs because there would be no need to purchase expensive hardware, software licenses and updates, IT technicians uh, to maintain the system. If I have an issue with OneDrive as a business customer, I call Microsoft. I don't need to run to my main IT guy and say, OK, something's wrong here. Microsoft pushes the updates. Microsoft sets all the rules and permissions and gives me all the licenses I need. I don't need to go to anyone else. Lastly, uh, scalable storage to suit needs. When we have scalable storage, that simply means if I need more storage at any one point in time, I can get more storage relatively easily. I don't need to sit there and, and think about how much it's going to cost me to go up a tier. If I need more, I get more. It might cost more, but the point is I can get more readily. Um, otherwise, I would have to go to a shop, buy a memory stick, buy a hard drive, come plug it in and use it that way. This way, there's no need for any of that. Next, we have the negative impacts. The first one says increased reliance on the internet. Yes, this is cloud, cloud storage, cloud computing. You need to have a constant connection to the internet. And people might become reliant on the internet when they don't have it. They don't know what to do. If you have cloud services and you don't have the internet, nothing will work. It's as simple as that, right? Increased security risk. Transmitting of data via the internet makes it more vulnerable to attack or hacking or viruses. That's very true again. Now, Typically speaking, if you're a company, you're ideally going to want to have some sort of VPN or some, si or some type of direct connection to your cloud person. However, if you're just a general, a very small company working on stuff, transmitting data or transmitting data via the internet does make it more vulnerable, 100% true. Um, introduction of a third party may potentially increase risk. That's true. I have my data on my PCs 
versus me sending my data to Microsoft. Whatever Microsoft decides to do with data, they might change their policies at 1 a.m. one morning when I'm sleeping and whenever they change their policies too, I don't have a choice. I have to either work with it or leave. And if I don't realize that there's a policy change within a sensible time period, it's going to cost me more. You may need to train staff in new working practices, example, saving and sharing data. Yes, cloud is still relatively new. So because of that, you might have to train some staff. Um, new threats to data security and how to avoid and um, how to avoid overcome them. That's true again. There's always going to be new threats. And the more you are on the internet, the, the bigger the chance of you getting hacked or having some malware attack your system. Cost, payment for cloud storage, 100%. You're going to have to always be paying a monthly subscription. Now, it's not the worst thing in the world because depending on the type of company you are, it might be better to mitigate the risk of losing your data. But it is a negative still. So on the cost, it has payment for cloud storage. Yes, user support initial and ongoing. Yes, so you have to constantly be paying for user support and it's always going to be ongoing. You never stop paying because that's just how cloud services work. That's how subscriptions work. And there might be the cost of training as well. So every time you hire a new member of staff or something gets updated, you might have to train people again.